Sex and Math 7-6, Lesson 103, Joel, Jojo, greetings on this fine, sunny May day. Uh, we're going to learn a super cool tool today that you're going to be using for the rest of your algebra careers. It is called, in my mind, cross multiplying. John uses a slightly different name. He uses cross products. Mm, products are the answer to multiplication problems, so it's kind of the same thing. But I've been saying cross multiplying for a really long time in my life, and I don't want to change. I like cross multiplying. So that's what we're going to call it. Now let's talk about what that even means. Last time, um, technically two times ago, we talked about um, proportions. And we use the example, I think we use this example, of something like this. Three-fourths equals six-eighths. Now, you've been adjusting fractions long enough to know, oh yeah, I see a pattern here. Three times two is six, four times two is eight. So these are equivalent fractions because you just took this one and you multiplied top and bottom by two. If you do the same thing to the top and the bottom, then you're not changing it. It's like you're taking the same amount of pizza and just cutting it one more time, right? Cutting it into smaller slices. So these are equivalent fractions. And a fancy name for that is proportions. It's just a fancy name that means they're a fraction. There are two ways of saying the same thing. Here's a cool thing about them. If you multiply the top of one fraction times the bottom of the other, and compare it to the answer if you multiply the opposite two sides, they'll always be equal. It's really cool. Three times eight, we're saying, should be equal to four times six. Three times eight, 24. Four times six, 24. You guys, it always works out. Cross multiplying is a thing we can do when we have proportions, all right? Now, notice what I did was I started with the top on the left and I multiplied it times the bottom of the right. I always start here because you know how like when we read, we always start in the upper left. That's just a natural starting place for our eyes. So let your eye go there first and multiply down. It has to make this X shape, right? Then once you've done that one, go to the bottom on the left and go up to the right. Okay, just that's just a natural progression for your eyes to follow. It doesn't matter, we could start with four times six and say it's equal to three times eight, but I'm asking you to follow this process until you really get the hang of it. Start with the upper left, go to the bottom right, then go down here and go up, all right? So that's cool. We can use this technique to test if, Proportions are equal. We have four examples in this. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We've got two fractions, three-fifths and four-sevenths. And we wanna test and see if they're equal, all right? So here's what we do, we cross multiply. Three times seven, there's the first x. Five times four, we're asking if that's equal, right? Ooh, five times four, not 54. Right? So we're testing three times seven, five times four, and we're gonna see if they're equal. Three times seven is 21. Five times four is 20. False. No, they are not a proportion. Okay? Makes sense. Um, John spends some time explaining why cross multiplying works, that it's not magic, that it's, I don't even wanna go into it because right now it's not important. I want you to get familiar and comfortable with how to do it. And I want you to trust me that there's a mathematical explanation for why it always works, but I don't want to get into that theoretical business right now. We'll get to that later. 103.2, do these two ratios form a proportion? Eight over 12 and 12 over 18. 
Okay, so our test is to cross multiply and see if it works. We start with the eight and we multiply it down to the 18. And then we're seeing, is that equal to 12 times 12? 12 times 12, I know right off the, the 12 times 12 I got by going like that. 12 times 12 is 144. 18 times eight, mm, that is gonna be 64, six. Eight plus six is 14, look at that. So the answer is yes. These two do form a proportion. Yay. Okay, beautiful. So we can use cross multiplying as a test with two fractions to see if they are proportional or in other words, equivalent fractions. We can also use it to answer riddles. I'm serious. Uh, what are we on, 103? Point three. Check this out. We've got one fraction and we want it to be equal to 10 over something. We don't know what number should go there. We don't know an easy way to multiply six by something to get it to be 10. So what we do is we use cross multiplication to solve for m. We start here and we go, okay, if we multiply six times m, that's gotta be equal to nine times 10. Make sense? So six times some number equals nine times 10. And then we divide this side by six to get the m by itself, right? Cool, this cancels. Now we have m by itself. Now, can we reduce? Here is a huge spoiler. John loves to make the numbers reduce and come out even in these. Not always. You'll get some fractions and some weird things, but he usually makes for really nice reductions. So I see, what can I cancel? I see the threes in this right away. Sadly, you're not here to help me. So three, nine divided by three is three, six divided by three is two. That's cool, I got that down. But look, now I can do the 10 and the two. This is a five and this goes to a one. So my final answer, I've got one on the bottom, M equals 15. Okay, so that is what goes here. And then when I see this, I notice a pattern and I go, oh, okay. So what if I did um, two over three as like my original fraction? If I multiplied each of these by three, I would get this. If I multiplied each of these by four, five, I get this. So I can see, oh, there's a pattern to this. I couldn't see it when I just saw this much, but once I got that answer, I saw, oh, look, it flows along, it works. Example 103.4, last one, ready? Use cross products to find, that's cross multiplication, to find the missing term in the proportion. Now it gives us to it in words, all right? 15 is to 21, as what number is to 70, ready? I'm gonna read it again, I'm gonna write down the numbers as I do it, see if it makes sense. 15 is to 21 as what number is to 70? I just use two letters to stand for what number. That sometimes is easier. If you wanna put an X there, that's fine. If you wanna put, a J because it's the letter of your name. If you want to put, you know, L for Liesl, I don't care. But a letter goes here. And I used what number because that helps me match the sentence. Let me read it one more time. 15 is to 21 as what number is to 70? Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to use cross multiplication. I start here. I multiply down. 15 times 70 equals... 21 times what number? Beautiful, there's my cross multiplying. I went down and I went up. I always make that X there to remind me of what I'm doing when I cross multiply. Okay, so before I multiply any of this out though, I always divide the number to get the variable by itself because this is where the magic happens, John. Always makes nice cancelings here. Um, I know that three times seven equals 21, and I know that 10 times seven equals 70, so I can cancel the sevens, and this will become 10 and three, right? I divided 21 by seven, I got three, 
I divided 70 by 7 and I got 10. Now I see this 3 goes into 15. I have 5 left, but now I'm down to 1 in the bottom, so I'm done. 5 and 10, so I get what number equals 5 times 10 is 50. Okay, so that means this number is equal to 50. That is the right number. And I can test it because now I see a pattern. Look, it's 5 over 7, you guys. 5 over 7, we multiplied top and bottom by 3, and we got 15 and 21. But if we multiply the original fraction by 10, we get the 50 over the 70. Yay, it all makes perfect sense. Cross multiplying is a really cool tool, and we will use it a lot. Practice problems are exactly what we just did. In some of them, we're testing a pair of fractions to see if they form a proportion. And then in others, we're solving for a missing letter. And then the last one is like what we just did where John gives you the proportion, not in numbers, but in words. Oh, isn't he tricky? But we're smarter than him. Well, I don't know if we're smarter than him, but we're just as smart. We don't fall into his little traps. Lesson 103 is now complete. See you next time.